Hello and welcome to another installment from PartZilla.com. I'm your host John Talley and today we're going to be working with our 2007 Honda TRX 400EX. What we're going to be looking at today is the uh, rear braking system or the lack thereof. As you can tell, spin the tire, push the brake, nothing happens. So what we're going to do is try bleeding it first and if that doesn't fix the problem then we're going to pull it apart and rebuild the master cylinder. So let's get the rear seat off and see what we've got to work with. All right, the first thing we need to do is go and remove the reservoir cap. And the fluid we're going to use is a DOT brake fluid made by Honda. It is an excellent choice for this uh, application. It has a very high boiling point of 490 degrees Fahrenheit, which is more than enough to handle this application. What we want to do is fill the reservoir about three quarters of the way full. Put our cap back on, but don't tighten it because we still want air to be able to flow behind it So as we're forcing the fluid through the system. And now that we've got fluid in our main reservoir, all we need to do is pull off the bleeder valve cap. We're going to use our 8 millimeter wrench. We're going to put a length of hose onto the tip of the bleeder valve and then run that down into a container. Now at this point, what we're going to do is pump up the master cylinder with the valve closed about three or four times, hold the, the brake pedal down and then release your valve. Now this is kind of a slow process unless you have a vacuum bleeder. All right, see what's happening here? We're drawing the fluid in and it is pushing almost nothing through. So you know what that tells me? That we have a problem with our master cylinder. So that's going to lead into a whole nother set of diagnostics. We'll give this a few more shots uh, and if it doesn't improve then we're going to pull the master cylinder apart and see what's going on in there. All right, we've been pumping a fair amount of brake fluid through the system. I'm not real thrilled the way the, uh, the master cylinder is operating. A uh, little quick tip here is uh, DOT 3 and 4 brake fluid is hydroscopic, which means it absorbs water. And I think that's what we've uh, had happen here. More than likely, water's gotten into the system. It's damaged the walls of the master cylinder and in turn damaged the seals that are needed to compress the fluid to go back to the, uh, the rear caliper. So as you can tell, if you look at the layers of the, uh, the fluid in the glass, there's a small layer of water, and I think that's what we're up against. So let's pull off the master cylinder, take a peek inside, and at least replace the seals, see if that takes care of our problem. All right, to remove the master cylinder, what we need to do is take off these two bolts, that lower pivot pin, your input line from the reservoir, and then your output line, which goes to the rear caliper. We can start with the rear pivot point for the, uh, the brake lever. I want to remove this cotter pin and then the actual pivot pin itself. A little bit of wiggling, she'll pop right out. Next we want to remove the hose clamp on the reservoir. Pull that up, reach through the frame Grab it at the top, kind of wiggle it back and forth. She'll pop right off eventually. Then we need to remove the hose that goes to the rear caliper. And that's held in by a 12 millimeter banjo bolt. You want to be careful here and not lose the top and bottom crush washers. So you want to keep those together. Now we just need to unbolt it from the frame itself. It's got two five millimeter Allen heads. Get those loosened up. And once we get her off the machine, we'll take her over to the, uh, the teardown bench, pull it apart, inspect those seals, look at the bore, 
Let's see if this is a candidate to, that can be rebuilt. So now it's off the machine. Let's head over to the teardown bench. And now with our master cylinder off the machine, it's time to take a look at it. And for me to take a look, I need these. I don't have a Honda part number for these, but I'm pretty sure you can find them at a local CVS. All right, the first thing we need to do is go ahead and pull where the, uh, the brake lever arm was connected before so we can get our outer boot off. So we want to break that loose. Pull it off, get that pinch bolt out of the way, and now we can grab that outer boot and pull it out of the way. Now from this point, when you're looking down into the uh, cylinder itself, you'll see a circlip. It's kind of a booger to get to. Reach in there. Get it lined up, press it in, like I said it can be a little tricky, and then pull out. Alright, get your push rod out of the way, now you can pull the main piston out, and behind that You've got the spring and the primary cup that come out in that order. And what we're most interested in is this little piece right here, which provides all the pressure inside of that cylinder. And as you can tell, it's somewhat flat. And if you look at the, uh, the Honda kit, which is under this part number, it's going to have all those pieces that I just pulled out of the master cylinder itself. And if you look at the difference in the profile in between those two, you can tell that this one was getting pretty worn. So this was definitely worth uh, going in and replacing. If you look down into the bore, it looks fairly clean. We're just going to spray it out with some brake cleaner, air dry it, then re-lubricate it with some DOT4 oil and then reassemble it. Now I've just finished cleaning out our master cylinder with a little bit of a Honda brake fluid cleaner. Blown it out with some compressed air. Now the real tricky part is to get this seal back on to the, uh, the master cylinder piston, which is right here. So what we want to do is use a little bit of our brake fluid just to coat the outside, make it a little bit easier to get on there. Now these things can be a bit of a bear. And it'll take some time to work it on. But a couple of strong fingers and fingernails. And she will pop on there. And that's the direction that you want. You want the flange extruding back to the back. Now from this point, we put the spring in the cup in. Go and push it down a little bit, give it some room. All right, from there, we want to put in a little bit more brake fluid. Just to oil the, the walls. In goes our piston. From this point, we're going to bring in our push rod. Whoop, have to be careful of that push rod, get that in there, and then we can bring in our circlip. Go ahead and leave that staged. And this is the real tricky part here, where you could actually use three hands. Ah. Push her back down. Press in on your circlip. And get it started back down in that bore. 
All right, it's down below the upper edge. The trick here is to push down around the sides until it goes down and you hear it snap in place. That was the snap we were waiting for. All right, at this point, we can go ahead and put on that outer boot. Has a little groove at the top. Put on our locking nut. Then our clamp for the pin. And she should be ready to go back on the machine. So let's get her back on there. All right, putting the master cylinder back on is just the reverse of what we did earlier. Go ahead and pop in your two five millimeter Allen wrench bolts. Don't want to over tighten these as they are aluminum and they would strip out pretty easily. The trick to that is don't put your hand on the end of your wrench, just keep it up toward the head. And that'll at least try to keep you from putting too much torque on it. Go ahead and install our pin through the <coughs> foot brake arm. Remember this one is just held in by a cotter pin on the other side. tricky to get to. It's kind of hard to see. Thread it through and then just bend it around. From there we want to go ahead and put on our uh, reservoir hose. got it on, then we just need to move the clamp back down. So about an eighth of an inch for the, the tip of the hose. Next is our line, going back to the uh, caliper with your banjo bolt. that snug back down. All right, let's get this thing refilled and get it bled off. A lot of air in the system, so we're just going to leave this top cover off. Same process as before. Want to pump it up a few times and release. Pump and release. Want to keep an eye on that upper reservoir because it's going to pull in the fluid fairly quickly because there's a lot of air in the system. Matter of fact, it's all air. After a lot of pumping, finally starting to make some headway. You can see through there, see so it's starting to spit out some fluid in the remaining air. See that? That's what we're trying to get out. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. We want to keep doing this, not letting our reservoir go dry until we get a steady stream of fluid out of this pipe without any air in it. You can feel the pedal starting to stiffen up. So we're definitely making some good progress now. All right, we've got all the air purged out of the system, but we, what we need to do next is just set the level for the uh, reservoir. So we still want to keep pumping it up like we were doing earlier, just bleeding it. 
but we want to really keep an eye on our reservoir so we can hit that upper mark. It won't take much to get there. And that'll do it. She's right at the upper mark. So we want to go ahead and pull off that rear hose. Make sure we're tight on that bleeder valve. Put the cap back on. Put on our reservoir cap. And this system is complete. All we need to do now is just remount the tire, pop the, uh, the rear seat back on, which can be a bear at, at times, and then she'll be ready to hit the trail. Listen, I appreciate y'all watching us for this one. And uh, if you want to learn more about this vehicle, keep coming back, because I think next week we're going to do the, uh, the front brakes. So until then, have a good evening. Thank you.